Hey everybody, welcome to our new flagship series, Fucking Conspiracy. Um, usually we talk about fucking uh, actual topics revolving around social... Are you seriously using the fucking microwave while we're trying to do this? I'm here and I'm here. Fucking J Dubs is streaming with me as well. Sh streaming to my laptop. Uh, J Dubs, you, you fucking John, whatever. You want to say hi? No. I'm sorry for using the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> we can't fucking get anything right on this show. I can't fucking figure out fucking OBS or XSplit or fucking anything. Anyway, more to the point. We're gonna, as you can see here, we've got Brett Keen on stream, uh, on screen rather. But um, I gotta talk about non sequitur first, cause Kyle's in some shit. Um, I've spoken to Kyle before. I haven't spoken to him recently, but I understand what's going on with his situation. So basically, he's got some other stuff that he has not talked to normal like the people that work with him about um and he's got to figure his shit out but just to kyle i guess you know if you want to fucking email me and talk about it then fine or fucking discord i think i'm in there just fucking at will kincaid it should still be that way so uh my advice to you kyle is either these people are saying that your channel is valued around $94,000. TJ's channel is not valued at $94,000. You you uh, listen, Sam, the the channel itself only has 31,000 subscribers. If you took a dollar for each individual fucking subscriber, you'd only have $31,000. So, I don't know if you had you can take a loan for 15,000. If you think you can afford it, Kyle, I say I'd say probably just break even with them on 15,000 and do your own thing or alternatively and probably uh, least uh, invasive I don't know what the fucking word is probably the least cataclysmic thing you can do is start your own side channel and just basically do whatever with these other people and then move whatever you want to do to your your other channel and call it a fucking day. Um, one last matter of business. Um, I am in the process of getting um, an incorporated or possibly an LLC for an overarching uh, branch and then of, of this production, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And it's, it's going to be three separate branches and I'm almost afraid to actually I'm not going to say exactly what the names are because someone will try and get the copyright out from underneath me or or file for the LLC because there's fucking spurgs on the internet so um this is going to be like three branches and I found a method of monetization that's going to work really well for us also we're branching out to uh audio exclusive to um I've I've got that set and then the final matter of business before we start this episode of conspiracy is J Dubs is definitely coming. We've got him down for the fifth to the seventh. I've got to go purchase the tickets tomorrow, but we've got the logistics of what that's going to entail figured out. Uh, so he'll be live. Um, if we can't get knock, uh, Nakasuchi from the raging atheist to do shit for the, the charity live stream that weekend, the, that will be the Friday to Sunday, anywhere in the Friday to Sunday region of 4th of July weekend. Uh, the weekend after 4th of July, rather. Um, then w I figure I'll just do my own fucking thing with J-Dubs live in studio. And me and him and my brother will just get hammered one night. Um, we've got a party to go to on, on that Saturday anyway, so we might already be pre-gaming at that point and have to uber home or have my lovely wife bring us home or something i don't know it's gonna be a disaster but nonetheless well, okay so now that, that fucking bullshit's out of the way we are kind of skipping around but at two minutes and 51 seconds brett says he's seen this show called vipers which has two um I think he says black guys who go into this fucking virtual reality video game and one becomes an Asian male and one becomes an Asian female and they fuck each other. 
Um, they they end up falling in love uh, throughout the uh, show. So do they? So have you seen the show? Do they fall in love, or do they fall in love as their alter egos in the game? Brett made it seem like they fell in love with the characters through the game. Right. I didn't Real know if it, but, went into the game. What's the fuck? The, okay, so. I think later in this video, and I'll have to search around, and if it's wrong, I'll I'll correct it. But um, he asked if this is if it's a sin to in virtual because reality they, uh, because they had wives and a family and stuff. Um, I think I don't know the Torah that well yet, but I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, lost it in, in your heart is equivalent to the same sin as adultery, right? Well, that's a New Testament spin to it. The Torah doesn't really put it that way, but there are opinions that if you lust after things, that it's just as much of a sin as doing it. Right. Um, but there... This is the other thing, too. So, I read an article that synthetic lab-grown pork and... Bear with me because I'm going to make a, a point. Um, that synthetic pork, pork that's grown in a lab, because it doesn't have hooves at all, and it's just it, they just grow the meat, that that pork is kosher. So is that an equivalent to a virtual reality thing where it's basically as good as a dream? I, I would, I'd, I'd never heard of that before about the meat. I would say it's not kosher. Someone told you it's kosher? Um, yes, yeah, some rabbinic council. Um, no. Let me, ch let me, I'm actually going to bring it up because it's probably worth looking up anyway. Uh, I mean, people, I, mean, I guess that's a point you can bring up. I mean, people find loopholes to do so, all sorts of different things. I mean, if you want to grow your own fucking meat in a lab and, and, eat, and suck on it like it's some good juicy pork chops, you don't need some rabbinical counsel to tell you to do it. You're going to be doing it yourself anyway, right? No yeah, one really this cares. Was, this was last year. Um, oh, it's even worse than I thought. It's cloned pig. Well, you wouldn't be able to eat it because it's pig. You can't eat anything that's derived from pork. Yuval Sherlow says apparently they're... A prominent um, Orthodox rabbi, I've never fucking heard of him. Right. Before, um, says cultured meat loses its animal identity and can be used to stave off hunger, pre um, prevent pollution, and avoid animal suffering. Oh, okay. So it's the the title is misleading. So this is actually lab grown pork. It's they just cloned the meat. I, to me, personally, like if I was a rabbi with a big black hat on, I would probably say it's not kosher simply because it's, even though it's cloned, it's still pig. It's still pig flesh, no matter how you can fucking slice it. No pun intended. Yeah, well, right. But I think that's that's the weird thing is, though, is that it basically they're saying that this synthesized meat... Um, <sighs> I, I, I don't know. It, you say I, I get what you're trying to say because it's synthesized. Little bit, I can't even say it because it's synthesized. It's not exactly real. So when you're when you're doing things in virtual reality, it's not exactly real. Is that the allegory we're making? That's the basic conclusion I'm trying to draw from this. So I, I was thinking that there is the, a possibility that it could be, at least in Judaism, uh, possibly not a sin. I mean, what happens in the mind is, is another extrapolation, too, because if it's happening in your mind and there are loopholes for, for lust in the same way, I mean, okay, so if you have, this is another thing, too. Um, if you have, um, there are people who can lucid dream. Have you heard of lucid dreaming? Yeah, I know what lucid dreaming is, yeah. Yeah, basically, for everyone who doesn't know, you can, throughout the day, you can condition your mind to uh, basically control your dreams to a greater or lesser extent, right? So if you can lucid dream, then if you lucid dream, is that a sin? 
And as far as I know, the Torah says that that dreams are like a, a gateway to uh, I don't know how to put it. Um, he, well, heaven or like some people would say like an upper level dimension. I've heard that referred to by some Jews actually. <laughs> I've been wa- I've been watching a lot of shit on the internet too, so that's also probably my fault if I've misconstrued that, like an upper level of consciousness or something like that. So, ordinarily that would be out of your control, but as a sin when it is in your control, that's another issue. I mean, I would say that it's up for debate. Certainly, um, virtual reality is coming at us a lot faster than we we originally anticipated because. Um, Nintendo came out with that fucking Virtual Boy thing. You remember that giant fucking headset that Nintendo oh, came out with? That abomination. Yeah, the red and black. They started there. And the, there there was like a prototype for a Star Fox game, and that was the only playable fucking thing on that on that console, I guess you would call it. Um, <laughs> but now we're up to like Sony View and like Oculus Rift. And now... Um, they've, they've started using virtual reality environments to communicate with coma patients who they thought were completely unconscious. But as it turns out, um, through, I, I don't know if it's MRI or MFRI or what, what the technology is that they're using to analyze the parts of the brain that associate with certain images and stuff like that, but they've basically mapped the brain out such that if you think about a thing, they can create an image on a screen replicating what you're thinking based on the data that they've got. And they've combined that technology with this coma patient stuff to basically start the, the groundwork for what um, Elon Musk is calling, I think nerve link. I think that's it. (laughs) If not, I'm confusing that with the, the popular anime sort of online, which basically uses the same premise wherein you put some device on your fucking head and it brings you into virtual reality environment. And you're, you're basically inside uh, all the, all of your senses are replicated. And, um, I think in the beginning part of that series, pain is dulled. So it's more like a video game and less like real life, but the, the pleasurable experiences, are set at normal, like, default levels like they would be in real life. So that technology is actually coming at us faster, and Elon Musk has actually put, I think, a a few million, or maybe it's billion dollars. It's probably closer to a billion with his fucking bankroll, but um, this is going to be a question that people, Jews and Christians and to a lesser extent, Muslims, because Muslims think everything's fu- an abomination, um, that that people of faith are going to have to actually think of. So it's not an unwarranted question either. Uh, it was sort of interesting that to think that about. Statement, that statement about Muslims were abomination. You should be beheaded. Oh fuck! I know. What am I? That's haram. I'm fucking kafia or whatever. You're a kafir, yeah. Yeah. You know what else is interesting? I I love that. Muslims hate Jews so much, but they borrow so much from the culture and the fucking language, and they bastardize the shit out of it almost worse than the Christians do. It's sure, yeah. It's that was interesting because I was I'm I'm trying to learn the fucking language, Hebrew, and I'm finding so many parallels to Arabic. Like, um, I mean, it's I mean, I think shalom, shalom. It's just, yeah, it's a lot. Similar, yeah. yeah, like Salam Aleikum, Shalom al Haim, or whatever it is. I, I, I'm I still lost in the pronunciation, but I'll get there eventually. Anyway. Brett, re- Brett left a comment on my video. He he said that I gave him cancer. Oh, shit. Well, hopefully this video I, doesn't give him cancer. Someone, someone send Brett a, 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 a card saying I apologize. My condolences. So fucking each other, I guess. Yeah, they, they, well, people fucking, sometimes what happens is people fall in love with the concept of what they think the other person is rather than what the, the other person actually is. I was guilty of this in my last relationship where I had basically convinced myself that she was this like really 
good person and she was just fucking awful and it took her almost killing me to figure it out. So mm-hmm. I, I can understand the level of disillusion that goes into the, a psychological fucking nightmare like that. Like if you're unhappy in your relationship, you need to find a fucking way out or you need to figure it out. Like, Nine times out of ten, there's no fix in something like that when you're to that point. You know what I mean? Nine times out of ten. It's not always completely unsalvageable. People can get their shit together, but it's it's really hard. You know? And sometimes it's you, and you want to just blame the other person, too. That's another thing. But anyway, I think we spent enough time on this particular situation, so we're going to skip ahead here. Okay. I remember, I don't even know if that video fucking part is usable, but that's fine. It doesn't fucking matter. Anyway, so Brett is talking about this this one episode or whatever where um, Miley Cyrus plays this fucking character and she gets replaced by what is essentially uh, a deep fake. Do you know about these deep fake things? It was on fucking CBS 6 Albany. I don't know if you watched local... <laughs> no, I don't watch. Blues. Sorry. Yeah, well, this was this was fucking everywhere. I was on Facebook too. These deep fakes perfectly replicate the facial structure, mannerisms, and sometimes up to the voice of uh, famous personalities and stuff. And sometimes ag- uh, regular people, if you have enough footage of them, these uh, these um, deep learning ba- based these deep learning based algorithms. Uh, basically replicate you from the ground up. And if you have enough uh, writing samples, they can replicate how you speak and replicate. uh, They they can basically say what, what they think you would say logically. Like if, like if you took all of Christopher Hitchens debates and you made a, a deep fake, you could replicate Christopher Hitchens as a virtual version of himself having a, a, a debate in real time at the higher levels with anybody from the the current day who's still alive, or you can have him with uh, other historical figures, like he could debate Adolf Hitler, for example. Um, and they would basically, a, the the AI would and the algorithm would extrapolate uh, his talking points from s- samples of these debates, and it it wouldn't be like a, a script. Although it, deep fakes are often scripted. Me. Okay, so our our um what what would you call it? Our intro for propaganda is entirely a fake singer using the Vocaloid program. Oh, oh cool! That that person that sings it that that uh, I think it's it, the program is Eleanor is um that that particular voice that person doesn't exist. It's completely synthetic. Gotta be fucking. I mean, see, there we go. We got it, Brett. We got the answers. And not only that, but uh, Hatsune Miku, the one who originally sang that song, and then it was adapted through the Vocaloid program to do a different one. Hatsune Miku doesn't exist. She's got her official YouTube channel, and I say her, but it's it's an that's a program. Somebody's just faked a person altogether. I think it has, I got to check it here. It's 755,000. It's a completely fictional singer, a completely fictional person who has legally over 10,000 songs attributed to her name. And because the, the software was developed by a college. I don't think that I, I'm not sure what the licensing on this is. Um, it's backed by the Yamaha corporation, but it was developed by, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Pompeii Fabra university in Barcelona, Spain in 2000. And then the, uh, the program was renamed from, because it, it was named by a Japanese student who was, who led the project, um, Kenmochi Hideki. Um, I'm gonna bastardize this, uh, this jinglish, uh, Bokoroido. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not gonna attempt to fake the accent. And it was renamed to Vocaloid because that's what it is. 
And all this program does, this vocal program, is it synthesizes instruments and voices. And then Yamaha paired it with a hologram program. Um, and I got to get the date here. Uh, World is Mine Project Diva Live. Hatsune Miku. This was August 12th, 2012. Created a completely... A completely fake hologram of a girl singing a song that doesn't exist. That there's no singer that's backing it. Um, in the original version of the song, through the voc Vocaloid project, the it, it was completely synthesized up to the instruments, but they used a live band because it was a live event to perform the music for the song with the exception of the vocals. So, there you go. How replaceable are we? Extremely. To the point where programs can basically create songs that become worldwide sensations so much so that if you attribute she has um over a trillion views on every video that's been attributed to her using um the hatsune miku voice profile so she's technically she technically doesn't exist and she might be the most viewed most listened to artist on the planet and she doesn't exist So, there you fucking go. J-Dubs, did I fucking lose you, bud? No, I'm just, my mind's fucking blown, man. Are, are you being facetious, sir? No, man, you, you're dropping fucking crazy shit, man. I don't know half the shit you're talking about. <laughs> did I blow your mind when I told you that the theme song wasn't sang by an actual person? No, I didn't know they could make fucking fake shit, make fake music. I didn't know. It sounds pretty all right, though, right? It sounds all right. They're going to start making YouTube videos of me. I'm going to just quit YouTube and just have some fucking robot make videos that I do. And no one will ever know. There are fucking news networks that do that now, too. They use the deep fake program. And they've just completely replaced their host and bought out the rights to their personage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got a fucking future. They're going to make me a fucking million-dollar YouTube channel with a robot. Yeah, they might make you I'll, say something that makes sense, too. I'll go, I'll go retire with my beautiful Brazilian wife and have a fucking wonderful time. Okay, so we got seven minutes left. Of Brex. We got something. I don't know. I got I, I only remember those two things. There's a third Brex thing. Brex in mind, you know that, right? He's gonna say it's fucking boring shit. <laughs> I know he is. Hold on, I gotta pause it. I'll clip this part out. All right, so I think I found the place where Brett is talking about shit. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm just gonna set it at normal for this one because I needed to speed around to find this fucking thing. Oh, I must have watched this video probably I don't know six times now. J Dub's if he'd listen to this, would probably be the tenth or eleventh time. So, and I think this video's got oh, 122 views, so that's where that number comes from. Half of them were me and fucking J-Dubs trying to get our points straight. Oh, boy. All right, let's see. Can video games influence people? Can pornography change how you look at sex? Can video games influence people? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they fucking, you know, some people say, yo, fucking video games, violence, killing people. But that doesn't seem to be the case since there was probably more violence before video games. But some people are retarded. They get addicted to things. They have a hard time separating uh, reality from fantasy. These people often have other psychological problems. It's not normal fucking people. When we get to fucking virtual reality, that's going to be a fucking trip to figure all that out. Um, whether we're just going to live in a matrix situation or if we're just going to, or we're going to split up the time or we're going to, you know, put some limitations on it. But so your second thing is, <coughs> does pornography change our relationships? Yeah. If you spend too much time beating off the degenerate shit, eventually you're going to think, oh man, I'd really like to have a three way. And then you, you talk your significant other into having a three-way or something like this 
and that for some people it's great and it works out, but for a lot of people it's like, oh, I just fucked up a perfectly functional relationship with my weird degenerate ship and I didn't even enjoy it. Because half the fun of fucking somebody is that sort of personal connection you have with the other person. It doesn't matter what hole you stick it in. It's all about that interpersonal relationship with a single individual. You can't make the same kind of connection like if you're a guy fucking two broads or if you're... Well, man, uh, sometimes it's like a best friend thing when you Eiffel Tower over a chick when you're spit roasting her, but that's a story for another day. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it does. Porn affects things. You can get addicted to porn just like you can get addicted to anything else, and it's not even addicted. I would say habituated because addicted is on a chemical level. Can you get addicted to the dopamine and the produced by your brain from watching these things? Yeah, sure, but it's not the same level as addiction as like cocaine or fucking nicotine or even caffeine. It's not the fucking same thing. So, uh, what was the other thing he said here? Let's play it. I believe that since we're designed beings um, in the image of God, I believe that when we go to sleep at night, and in the Book of Job, it talks about this. Our subconscious. Oh yeah, this is what we were talking about earlier with the Book of Job. So, yeah, this this is where I got this idea from. I watched this fucking video so many times I forgot this is where I heard this from. I did know about the Book of Job, obviously, but um, yeah, I think that was all I had to say about that actually. Um, let's talk about programming people. Yeah, we get programmed with social media all the time. No, it's not a permanently programmed state. Yes, you could fucking talk yourself out of it if you realize that you've been suckered into bullshit. Me, I've just come out of the more right-wing stuff because I've been listening to people who I disagree with moderately a little bit at a time and now I'm beginning to see the other side and kind of come around to being a little more fucking liberal again like I used to be. Uh... I still do kind of like Trump because he's a shithead. I don't know about you, J-Dubs, but. Oh, I love Trump. It's fucking. It I is, love his Twitter. I, I love his fucking Twitter, too. I can't believe that that guy, that we've got Rodney fucking Dangerfield as our president. He's, you know, he comes out like the fucking. Hey, yeah. I'm fucking president of America. If I make this shot, we're all going to get laid. And it's like. <laughs> That guy is our fucking president. It's fucking amazing. But also, like, he's, like, talking about doing more fucking shitty gun ban type stuff with this fucking, um, the the silencer, which isn't even a fucking silencer. It's a suppressor. It's not just for, it's not just for silence. It's accuracy. And it, and it trades accuracy and, um, reduction of sound for uh, the the amount of distance that the bullet can travel because it's a, a percussive suppressant. So it's... Hey, he, the fact that he doesn't understand this and that the NRA is still okay with him on this fucking suppressor ban bullshit just goes to show that the, both sides of this fucking argument are corrupt motherfuckers. But I don't know. I don't want to get into a Trump rant in the middle of this fucking thing. It's already almost 40 minutes long. All right, let's... Just try to get to the end of the yeah. video. Yeah, people want to have 50 caliber machine guns mounted to the back of their truck. That's all good to me, too. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so fucking... That's conspiracy. We're going to continue to do shit like this because we don't have fucking time to do live streams during the week. We both work full-time fucking jobs and we've got women and, and lives and and other things or whatever. So, uh, I'm not going to tell you, like every other YouTuber on the internet, that you should like this video. I'm not going to tell you to subscribe. I'm not going to tell you to book this on a playlist. I'm definitely not going to ask you to go to my subscribe star and donate. With all this Vox media horse shit, with all the fucking deplatforming, no ads ever on this fucking channel. No sponsored unless I fucking actually use the product and it's not a piece of shit. I can't speak for J-Dubs, though. He's... After all, the bigger uh, yid culturally than me here, so he might sell out. So I can't. I, I it's, I just, <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm gonna go now. Bye.
That's how I chose to end this video. Fucking kid. I'm gonna fucking kill myself.